Hey, what is going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the vlog. Hope everyone is having a fantastic weekend. It's been a hot minute since we've seen the TRX on the channel, but this being my daily, it's almost always dirty, kind of like it is right now. And I kind of have to apologize right out of the gates. I'm really sorry that the truck's as dirty as it is. I washed it yesterday morning in anticipation of filming today's video. And unfortunately last night, a buddy of mine lost traction in his car when we had the small little blizzard thing last night for like three, four hours. It was just like a squall of snow and I had to go bail him out. And even though 24 hours ago this car was freshly washed, it's now dirty, but you know, what better way to film a TRX than its natural habitat of having mud, dirt, salt, and debris all over it, because this is an everyday truck. Regardless, it is absolutely insane to think that we have now had this truck for one full year. Yep, last March is when we took delivery of this truck here on the channel as the next channel car. And what better way to celebrate one full year than to do a formal one year review update going through the ins and outs of this truck and talking about the various pros, cons, I have a dedicated video talking about the five things that I love and the five things that I hate, something that I always do with the vehicles that I own. But the way I like to do these videos is I like to do a full on review, a full 360 front to back and go over everything about this truck. Kind of like what Doug DeMuro might do or Joe Rady from Rady's Rides might do, but sprinkle in a little bit of the ownership experience and all the various things that I've learned after having had this truck for a full year. I think that the amount of time that I've spent with this truck, I can add a little bit more to that review for anybody that's considering getting a TRX or waiting for their TRX. There's context that I can provide that I don't think a regular reviewer that might go to a dealership lot and just pick up the truck and walk around with would be able to do. And so before diving into today's video, let's just get a little bit of context. I picked this truck up in March of 2021. So this is a 2021 Ram 1500 TRX and I've put about 6,000 miles on it. And over the course of that 6,000 miles, I've learned so much about this truck. The big thing and the only real drawback, something you obviously know going into it, so there's really no complaining about it, I'm perfectly fine with it, is the fuel mileage. I get about 8 to 10 in the city because I do drive a little bit aggressive. I like to have fun with it and I like to hear the supercharger and I like to hear the exhaust, so I get into it every now and then, or all the time for that matter. And then on the highway, if I'm really gunning it, if I'm in a rush, maybe I'll get 12 miles per gallon on the highway. If I really baby it and drive about 55, 65, somewhere in that ballpark, I can squeeze out 13 to maybe the advertised 14. I do apologize for the wind. I'm supposed to be brown, but I'm kind of pale white right now because it's about 32 degrees, windy and chilly. But rain, snow, sunshine, clean or dirty, I do want to make content on a consistent schedule, so I want to make sure that this video gets out this week. So let's talk about the Ram TRX after one full year. Starting off at the front, I really do love this front end. I like the fact that there's a lot of hard plastics everywhere. These are very strong surfaces, so you don't really need to expel anything. You don't really have to worry about paint protection on the front end because it's all hard plastics or metals and materials that if a small rock was to come and hit it is really not going to do a bunch of damage. So I really like the fact that this is a rugged everyday truck. A very bold front end reminiscent of the Ram Rebel, but I like the fact that they use the lights, the headlights from the Ram 1500 Limited, which has higher output LEDs that also turn with the steering wheel. So when you're driving the truck, especially off road, your visibility isn't just directly in front of you, but it's also where you're turning the steering wheel. So you get a little bit more light where you're going. Coming up top, you get the massive hood, lots of inlets for air extraction, air intake, Huge fan of the graphics. I didn't originally order my red TRX with it, but if I had to do it again, even in the aftermarket, I'd get the graphic because I think it really sets the truck off. And I love the fact that they integrated the marker lights in the hood as opposed to doing the traditional grill layout like the Raptor, because we all know that's a lot easier and cheaper to copy than replacing a whole hood, which is why you don't see a lot of Tacomas out there or GMCs out there running around with hood lights in but you do in the grill with knockoff products. Coming along the sides, 35 by 12 and a half inch tires. These are really good tires. They're relatively quiet. The one drawback that I do have on the side of the truck is that the tires do a lot of self-inflicting damage and that they kick up a ton of rocks on the side of the vehicle. Absolutely love the bulging wide fender flares. I think they look fantastic. I think that Ram has integrated the wide body stance to this truck because it is a much wider track. They've done it just very tastefully and they integrated nice little lights right here to be your fifth lights. For those that don't know, when your vehicle is wider than a certain width, you need five forward facing and five rear facing marker lights, which most HD trucks just go with the cab lights on the roof line, but Ram with the TRX forward, the Raptor got a little bit creative with it. And I think it's really nice that they do something a little bit more unique. Continuing that trend, you have functional vents on the side that extract heat because this is a very hot engine and we'll get in the engine bay soon here. The molding comes out a little bit to add some protection, but if you look, the tires from the factory are pretty much past the molding line, which is why rocks get kicked up 
and with a clean truck it'd be more visible but there are a couple nicks over here you're not going to see them unfortunately with how dirty it is but i do have a couple small rock dings on the side on both sides that have resulted from the tires kicking up rocks on the truck so if you have a trx after having it for one year that's definitely one drawback that i have noticed so i recommend considering either expel or even a really nice cheap option is weathertech mud flaps both great ways to protect the trx from self-sustained abuse you get full visibility into the bill stein active terrain dynamic shocks these things are absolutely fantastic i think the ride quality on this truck is honestly really great it's very floaty but in the right modes it can be much more rigid if you're off-roading and it's just a really really nice ride quality for a daily truck coming along the back you have non-functional vents right here obviously there's no heat to extract from the side of the bed so they could have molded this in maybe a little bit better, but I think this is a filler plastic piece so they can use the regular Ram 1500 limited lights with the wider bed, and this can kind of be that stopgap piece in the middle. Overall, a very bland tailgate, nothing really special back here besides the TRX badge, but it, it is functional and that's really what counts. You get a nice little step over here that you can use to get into the bed, talking specifically about the step and the tailgate while we're here very light tailgate surprisingly it's much lighter than the uh, aluminum raptor tailgate because of the assist technology that they have in the tailgate itself a very functional step i think ford has the best one where the handle and the step integrate in the tailgate so it's very central and you have something to grab gm's tailgate is pretty awful with the whole multi-function thing it's over engineering if there was one picture to represent over engineering it would be the gm tailgate situation this is very simple and functional you just kind of put your foot up put your hand on the side of the bed and you can kind of pull yourself up not much to talk about back here and it's functional the bed liner is held up great you can see you know i've done light work with this truck but i have the f-350 for all the heavy stuff and then you have the rails for the active cargo management system where you can get accessories to use with the trx stepping into the back of the trx one of the nicest second rows of any pickup truck on the market the only one that offers cooled seats in the second row which was huge in the summer people loved it back here friends family when they got back here absolutely loved the setup in terms of seat wear the camera might not pick it up but there is small uh, little bits of like crack fade going on in the seats not a lot of people have sat in the second row i'm mostly a loner with few friends so it's not like i have a ton of people in here just like the c8 corvette but i think sun has a big impact on these seats so it's very imperative that you provide some kind of protection either through window tint or parking indoors because this is such a very supple and soft material that the sun can cause premature cracking inside the seat but otherwise very functional the only issue that i've had in here and you can see right here there's like a plastic piece missing it's been missing since the day that i took delivery of the truck the dealer sent me the replacement and i put it on and it managed to either disappear and i think it's falling into the cab which is probably where the original one went so in terms of the entire interior the only issue that i've experienced has been that little one plastic piece taking a look at what all the commotion is about this is the tried and true 6.2 liter hellcat hemi v8 Ooh, it's nice and warm in here and i've had almost no issues with this motor or drivetrain it's been battle tested since 2015 with the original hellcat challengers and then the trackhawk took it to a more weighted drivetrain and handled it just fine for a couple years before they dropped it in the trx the only issue i have had during my one year of ownership is i had a leak with the secondary coolant reservoir so you have your main coolant reservoir and then you have your supercharger coolant reservoir on the side you can see mine's kind of like right in the middle now that was well into the min area because there was a line or an inlet underneath i had it taken care of under warranty that was leaking and dripping on the manifold so nothing was really pooling underneath I want to say it was this line right here that was running over that way and it was dripping onto the manifold so it was evaporating and I could after shutting the truck off here like a sound as every drop fell onto the manifold and so it took a while for me to figure out what was happening until I saw that level low. Dealers took care of it under warranty. It's actually something that's been very common in the original early builds of the TRX. I took delivery of this truck in March, so February is probably what the build month was, which is the second month of production for the TRX, and there were so many various issues. So that's a really small one compared to things other people have had. Another small issue that I've had so far in one year is this is something everybody, even with 2022 TRXs, should look at. The fuse panels, a couple of these were loose. I had more loose on the inside under the driver foot area. There's pictures of it on the forum, so you can definitely join the TRX forum and be a part of the conversation around what this is but i did have to tighten a couple fuses that were loose and when i say loose they weren't seated all the way so you just kind of have to push down on them and once they're seated you don't have to worry about it but otherwise a very reliable motor it's a fun motor the transmission and engine pairing is just amazing and otherworldly it's really supercar level
And stepping into the driver's side, I used to really dream about this shifter, which is a really weird thing to say now out loud on camera, but it's the same shifter that was in the Trackhawk, and I always wanted a Trackhawk, but this ultimately is a better daily vehicle. Fantastic interior in terms of seat wear here, same thing as the second row, you know, more people sit in it, less people sit in it, it just seems to be like sun has its impact on it, but otherwise wearing much, much better than the C8 Corvette seats do. And if you have a 2022 Uconnect 5, has been a little glitchy for some people. Thankfully, I have Uconnect 4. Absolutely love it. Has all the features that I'd need, all the convenience. Everything's intuitive. And so if you ask me, I think 2021 is probably a better year for the TRX. And this thing is fully loaded with every option. I definitely didn't hold back on it. And I have no regrets with this truck. So that's pretty much all I have to say about the interior. One of my favorite things about the interior, hands down, without question, is the steering wheel. The heated steering wheel in this car is... It's practically like having a radiant heater like next to your face and in colder climates if you're somewhere that lives somewhere where it's cold this is one of the best steering wheels to own so i want to give a shout out where a shout out is due on the steering wheel and i have so many videos that's broken down the ownership experience but but this is the ram trx very minimal issues it's an amazing amazing daily truck this thing is a rocket on wheels it's your muscle car, supercar killer, hot rod in the summer and the winter. That's the big thing. People with McLarens, they're parked in the garage right now because there's salt on the ground, sand on the ground, and traction's an issue. The TRX will pretty much blow the doors off just about any vehicle you're going to come across daily driving. Offer the full luxury of a high-end Mercedes interior with the practicality and utility of a mid-sized truck with a small size bed that still gives you tremendous capability with great towing. And I know you guys will probably say he reads the brochure. <laughs> this truck is just amazing and the brochure doesn't have to work hard to sell it. If you can make peace with the gas mileage that this truck gets and the filling costs, especially with the high fuel prices, this is a tremendous vehicle to own. And for those that are following the channel, I don't own vehicles that long. A year is really pushing the limit a year, maybe a year and a half, but there's nothing that makes me want to get rid of this truck. And even I have been giving thought around what's the next evolution of the channel? What do I get next to review and own and share the ownership experience with? And I can't find anything that I want to replace the TRX with. And so bundle up that whole TRX experience. You have to look at what the costs are. Obviously, excise tax is going to be high depending on what your state is. Talking about one-year ownership costs, excise tax is probably like two grand, $2,200, $2,300 for the first year since the MSRP is close to $100,000. Insurance is relatively cheap. We're at like 11, 1200 bucks. I have the monthly payment video with the exact number on there if you want to find the exact number. And so you figure between excise and insurance, you're at about three, $3,500. And then you have to figure cost of, you know, fuel and whatnot is varying based on your driving. The big thing to consider here is if you got this truck at MSRP or below MSRP, in my case, I paid MSRP, so the $92,000 for this truck. A full year and 6,000 miles later, I can still get about eighty-eight dollars to $90,000 for this truck trade-in, probably the full ninety-two, ninety-three for retail if I tried to private sell it. I lose sales tax in Massachusetts, unfortunately, because Massachusetts never really fights for the little guy. Dealers can strong arm you on that front, so for me, trading in is really the only option unless I want to lose about six grand in sales tax. So let's say I got eighty-eight, ninety thousand dollars on a $92,000 sticker. It's four, maybe five thousand dollars that I'd lose in depreciation with three, four, five thousand dollars in ownership expense. So the realistic cost to own this amazing truck is maybe less than seven thousand dollars, and that's not bad given today's marketplace. And if I am being brutally honest, I could probably flip this private sale for over MSRP since it's a 2021. The base price from 21 to 22 has gone up like six, seven thousand dollars. This exact truck now in 2022 is going to cost with all the same options, all the same features is going to run you somewhere around 95,000, I want to say 96,000 maybe. And so I could really technically private sell it, and it or find the right dealer to get me maybe even close to 90. And at that point, my annual cost of ownership is going to be sub $5,000. And so lastly, on the way out of today's video, first off, thank you everyone for staying this long. Hopefully you found this informative and helpful. I like making these videos as a platform where in the comment section, I think this video strives the most. I'd be lucky if this video got to 10,000 views, if I'm being brutally honest, especially being a small channel. But for anyone that's considering it, the biggest thing about this truck, and I mean this from the heart, is it's helped me build connections. It's helped me make friends. The TRX community is amazing. If you're not on it, join the TRX forums. 
I've made some amazing friends. I've found some amazing people on there that have helped make my automotive journey that much better that I don't think any other vehicle would have gotten me. So again, huge shout out to the Ram TRX community as well for making this journey truly amazing. I mean that from the heart because for a knucklehead like myself, living in an area where there aren't that many car enthusiasts, there aren't many nice cars out there, the amount of respect, the camaraderie and friendship that this community has is second to honestly none that I've experienced so far. And so that adds to the ownership experience after one year as well. And so just like that, that is everything that I have for today's video. If I forgot something, let me know in the comment section down below. I will gladly answer any questions anybody has around costs, driving dynamic, features, issues, anything. Again, this truck has been reliable. It's been versatile. It's been amazing. And it's come at a very low cost of ownership outside of Wolf Fuel. And I keep talking about it being 30 degrees. So before we call today's video an end, I mean, we kind of have to do it. Never gets old. Never gets old. So that's it, everybody. That is the Ram TRX after one full year. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a big old thumbs up. If you have not already, definitely consider hitting that subscribe button. Check out some of the other TRX videos on the channel. This truck is absolutely flipping amazing. I am very cold, so I'm going to call it here. And as always, until the very next video, I look forward to. I should sit in the sun the whole time. What am I doing? As always, until the very next video, I look forward to seeing all of you down in the comment section below and leave a comment down below. What do you think I should get after the TRX to it or do I move on to something else? I am eyeing a track hawk, so you know, who knows what the forward journey brings. But after one full year, the TRX journey has been pretty much a Cinderella story and that's what this truck is. That's what Ram has built. And with that, I'm out. Everyone have a good one.